Yeah, you guys actually reminded me. Thank you. How do you turn your mic off? There's a mute button. Yo, thanks for reminding me to record. Okay, it's recording. Okay, yeah, the use there. Right. So okay, let me switch off the chat because it's gonna disturb me. So guys, um, the first thing we're gonna touch on is um psychology, right? Psychology. Psychology and touch on psychology, you know, because everybody can trade, right? So everybody knows how to know, everybody knows how to analyze the market, but only a few people can actually like, trade and hold positions. I know I know a lot of people who open trades. It's a right, it's a good trade, but then they close too soon. Or worst case scenario, I know people who don't even open trades at all because they're scared, you know? Like you must come to the market with 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 the uh, with the uh, with the right mindset, you know. You mustn't come to the market scared. You mustn't come to the market with a big head, you know? And one thing you need to know is that if you're a beginner, you are bound to make losses. You are bound to blow accounts, you know? There's no way about There's no way around it, you know? So, like, you can't really cry when you blow an account, you know? Like, you need to accept that this is like a business. You know, businessmen, they take, they go to the bank, right? And they will take, like, 100 million rand loan or up to 500 million. You know, to start up a business, you know, to buy land, buy a property. You know, I'm sure maybe you guys have parents or family members that, that um, are entrepreneurs, you know. Go to the bank, take a loan, bank, take a loan, right? You're basically risking, like, you know, an entrepreneur is someone who risks, you know. Um, so they take that 100 million and then they go buy land for 50 million, you know, and then they left with another 50, they left with 50 million to buy, let's say it's a... A law firm, no, not a law firm, yeah, a law firm, whatever it is. You buy equipment, you buy desks, you buy laptops, you employ people, right? And then three months down the line, not every business, not every business is going to be successful, you know. Three months down the line, you're not making a profit as a business, you know, you're forced to close down. That's hundred million gone in debt, you know. So you must treat trading like a business, guys. You can't be crying if you lose two thousand, if you blow two thousand right? Like it's, it's you bound to like lose money, you know. And in terms of psychology, that's the first thing you need to accept that you are bound to make losses, you know. Once you deposit the money into your broker, guys, it's no longer yours. That money is no longer yours. You need to now work on a way to get that money back. You feel me? You need to you need to work on getting that money back, you know. So you need to treat. You need to please. And issue. I don't know. I can't see the participant now because I'm on the screen. Leander, switch off your mic if you can hear this, just please. But I hope you guys can hear me though, what I've been saying. Could you guys hear that? I'm really sorry, but can Leander just switch off his mic? He's really disturbing us. Like please. a skill in Luana, but can you please just switch his mic? Hey, let me look for him. Uh, let me look. Oh, I see. Leander, who? Leander. I'm not sure about his name, but it's Luanda. He has his video camera on. It's disturbing. Can you just switch off his mic? I think uh, I just removed. It's recorded, so you'll see it. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, yes, but we can't see you. I think it's out. Okay, so yeah, guys, you need to, the first step in terms of psychology, right, working on your psychology, you need to accept that you are bound to make losses, you know, and you need to come and you need to come to the market with <clears throat> a calm head, you know, cool-headed, you know. Like, you mustn't come to the market with the mindset to make money, you know. You mustn't come to the market with the mindset, you know, you mustn't come to the market scared. So you mustn't come cocky, you mustn't come scared. You must just be in the room, you must be net neutral, right? You need to be neutral, <clears throat> right? So that's, like, just a little bit on psychology, guys. Like psychology is is hectic. There's a lot more to it, you know. But for today, like you need to accept going into this week, you need to like accept. I'm not demotivating anyone or anything. 
but you are like bound to make losses. You know, even I make losses. Remember as a trader, like you are bound to make losses. It's like a business. It's like a business thing, right? So <clears throat> enough on psychology, guys. I'm just going to get into um, technical analysis, right? So remember, guys, we use technical analysis. We don't, I don't look at fundamentals. Maybe some of you do, but um, I don't, I don't look at fundamentals, right? Strictly technical, strictly trend lines, right? So guys, remember that in the market, right, the market moves in two directions, right? Uptrend, downtrend, as an example of an uptrend. But drawing is the worst, so you guys would have to forgive me. Uptrend, right? And this is an example of a downtrend. Right, like that. So you can see in an uptrend, the best way to look at, the best way to notice an uptrend, right, you need to look at the lows, right? Look at the lows. If like the lows are like going up, then it's obviously an uptrend, right? And look at the highs and the downtrend. Um, if like you know they're going down, then it's a downtrend, you know. Like there's the market moves in um on an uptrend is a high low. Okay, so rising is gonna take time, but this is the bottom is a high low, and this is a higher high. Higher high, right? This is like purely the basics, right? Higher high. Right, and then in a downtrend, this is um a lower high, right? The point where you connect your, your trend line, this is a high, right? Just that now it's in a downtrend, so we're going to call it our lower high, and this is our lower low because it's at the bottom. You check, right? So, guys, in terms of connecting your trend line, um, you always want to connect your trend line on your lows, right? So, in an uptrend, you usually want to connect it. I'm going to try to change the color so that. It's different. You connect on the obvious um, lows, guys. So you, you see, you have peak one, low one, low two. Okay, in the textbook that I sent, it's called peaks, right? Peaks and throughs, whatever it is. So you have peak one, peak two, right? And guys, as you all know, let's just pretend this is straight. You know, let's just pretend. My drawing isn't the best, right? So as you guys all know, we get touch one touch two, and also touch two, wait for number three, guys. Touch three is our entry point, right? So peak three, third touch, we call it the third touch. That's where we enter the market, guys. That's where they enter the market, you know? So if we get a third touch, obviously with, um, there's more to it than just touching, you know, it's reversal candlestick with rejection, you know, stuff like that. But to simplify it, the third touch, guys, is our entry point. Third touch, entry point, right? Chat is where we enter. And again, on the fourth, Two days to change the color, and again on the fourth touch. Guys, oh, we, don't, so we don't, we don't, we don't need to. Um, we don't. So sure. We can't see the whiteboard. So it's just um. Can you see the whiteboard now? I can see, but we can see. People are saying they can. Go click, click on the thing there, and choose um. A different screen. Everyone, everyone says they can see. Okay. Yeah, I just fiddle there on the on the on the screens. Swipe to the left. The thing swipe to the left. Swipe to the left. Okay. So as I was saying, guys, basically we wait. We draw our trend line from the two touches, right, and then we wait for touch three. That's if we catch our trend in the early. Like while it's still like forming, you know, sometimes you open a trade or you open a chart and you can see that we got the third touch. Um, let me just two. You open, you open your charts and you could find the market over here, right? So obviously what you're gonna do is you're gonna connect your, your train line and you're gonna wait for touch number four, you know? You're gonna wait to see how the market reacts to the train line, basically. You're gonna be looking for a fourth touch. Remember we trade what we see, not what we think, you know? You don't wanna like, some people, I actually get a lot of beginners that ask me that, okay, if if um if the market has moved off the trend line for the third touch, why don't we enter sales at top for it to ride it going down? Guys, that's not like a solid entry point. You know, we strictly trade trend line trading, you know. No trend line touch, no touch, no entry. I stick by that rule, no touch, no entry. That's why I think we're like two days, three days, without four days without trading. 
if the if I didn't get the touch, I have no reason. I have no reason for me to enter. You know, it all goes. That's just part of my trading. Um, that's my trading. Um, rule number one trading rule: no touch, no entry, guys. Remember, as a trader, you need to have rules, guys. And I want to share this one rule that you, all of you guys should actually um, all of you guys should actually um, also like you know stick to this rule. Live by the rules that no touch, no entry. No need to force trades. You can. Some people wait days some people wait weeks um without like you know without an entry point you know so as i was saying guys you always wait for the market to retrace down to your trend line right so now let me go to the charts let's go look at the charts can you guys see the charts can you guys see the charts Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. So as I was saying, guys, let's do let's do NAS. Because last session I was focusing on currencies. Let's do NAS this session. Okay. Let me move this thing. yeah so guys as a, this message is in the chat okay sure so as i said guys um i should move full screen like i said another thing we always analyze on the bigger time frames we do this to avoid being caught on the wrong side of the markets right so you want to see the bigger picture guys you know bigger picture that's how you avoid getting caught on the wrong side of the market you know like just a silly example right Actually, now I'm not going to go there because there's no waste of time. But if you look at the daily time frame, you know that NASDAQ is like bullish, right? Bullish. So we are going to be looking for buys. Like, you know, we are going to be looking for more buys and sells, right? I'm not saying that NASDAQ never sells. There are sell, there are sell trades that are seen that are seen in the group, you know. But looking at the bigger time frame, you know um, what type of trades you really want to be looking um, to enter, right? So as I said, remember guys, we connect our trend line on our obvious low. So here's our first, second, and third, right? And as you can see, also the third, third touch, NASDAQ. You see, closed above, closed above our trend line, pushed up, right? Same as for the fourth, right? So now you can imagine when you caught this fourth touch, and you, you had the patience to hold your European deep, deep profits, right? So. Yeah, that's what you do for your upward trend line, right? And for your parallel, I'll call it parallel because on the other side, right? You do the same. You want to connect it on your um on your obvious um peaks, you know. So just like this, touch number one, touch number two, right? But you want to extend it to wait for the third touch to sell, right? So as you can see, we can see the NAS is in a channel, right? This is actually a long term analysis. So next thing you want to do is you want to go down to a smaller time frame, H4, right? Let's just, let me just do it like this. Now focus on what's happening, right? So as you can see, this is our third touch, that shot up. I did, um I covered this in the last seminar, right? In the last Zoom thing, your take profit is always your previous high, right? Because that's the, that's the zone where the market is most likely to reverse. So as you can see, because some people struggle, some people ask me like, how do I know this is it my take profit? Guys, take profit is always the previous high, always at all times. So this is the third touch. Remember the third touch I showed you on the daily time frame. So that your entry points would have been somewhere around here, right? And you would teach your take profit to be this high over here. This is the previous high. Take profit would have been smashed, you know? Take profit would have been smashed. And like I said, the previous high, is with the zone is where the market is most likely to reverse. And as you can see, that exactly did happen. Exactly that happened. Came back down, came back down for fourth touch. Take profit now would be the previous high, which is over here. You can see CP would have been smashed, you know. But I, I went into detail with this um in the last one. It's saved on the group, right? I even explained how to say TP2, TP3, all that stuff, right? So that's just take profits, right? 
and targets and all that. So we can see now, let me just delete this. So as much as we started our analysis on the daily time frame, right? I want to go into smaller time frame to catch like, you know, more trades. Because honestly speaking, if you're just waiting on the daily time frame, um, you're like going to miss out on a hundred, like 98% of the trades, you know, because you'll be like, now you're going to wait for two, three, four, touch number five, you know, and that isn't always guaranteed, you know. So you need to see, this is the purpose of using um multi, this is the purpose of multi time frame analysis, you know, you capitalize, you can catch more trades, right? So this is going to, yeah, like I said, guys, you draw your trend line on the obvious lows, right? <clears throat> so that's where we would connect our trend line. Um, so you can see we have touch number one, right? After that, we would connect it to here, right? And obviously we can see that our um, trend line is, we drawn our trend line, and now we wanna wait for touch number three. Remember three touches to make the trend line valid, guys. Three touches. This is usually that stuff in that book that I sent, like three touches make the trend line valid. So touch number one, two, three, right? This would have been your entry point. But remember, guys, like I said in the previous video, in most cases, you want to wait until um, the daily. So you want to wait for the daily um, candle to close to avoid being caught on the wrong side of the market, right? That's what I personally like to do. Daily, if not H4, right? So in this case, let's talk about, in, let's talk about where, we would end, where we would enter the market in this example right over here. So you can see we have touch number one, touch number two, touch number three. Sort of like a fake out in a way, right? So let me show you guys the importance of waiting for your candles to close H4 and daily time frame, preferably daily, right? So looking at the chart, you would have seen NAS drop all the way down. And remember we drew in our trend line. So you'll be waiting for a reversal as it touches the trend line, right? So you'll be waiting for NAS to reverse over here. Uh, let me just remove this because it's blocking the candle. You'll be waiting for NAS to reverse right over here. Right over here, you're waiting for NAS to reverse, but you can actually see that this candle is very, very bearish, you know, and it shows no sign of reversal. No sign of reversal. So in this case, guys, like I said, you don't need, you don't just wait for, we don't just wait for the market to touch the trend line. You know, we need confirmation, candlesticks, candlesticks closing above, um, reversal candlesticks, you know, quick rejection. You look at a lot of things, right? So me personally, see touch two and three, we're sitting on the trend line. For me, it's still not an entry point. Let's pretend this, this, all of this hasn't happened, right? We're looking at it. Just as this was the last candle that we can see, just pretend, guys. <laughs> so, me looking at it, I wouldn't enter, you know. And obviously, you can see that the candle opened, and at some point, the candle came back down here. Candle reached all the way down here. Remember, guys, it's important to know how to read candles. Um, but there is that um candlestick Bible, what, what, what that I sent, you know. All those PDFs I sent on use list. Those are the PDFs that um taught me after my session with my mentor. After the one-on-one -on -one session, he gave me videos, PDFs, and I initially had to read over those um, practices, obviously with um, live sessions, you know, I got better and everything, right? So you need to understand, you need to know how to read candlesticks, right? So eventually the candles, the, this candle closed the right over here, right? And it's actually below the trend line, right? So people who rush and jump into trades, they would have looked at this as a breakout, because it closed below, they would have looked at it as a breakout, right? So this kind of stick closing below. So this would be our breakout candle and they'd wait for retest and they would look at this as the retest when that's really wrong if you're only looking on H1, you know? Situations like these, let's say I open the charts and I saw this candle. To confirm that it's really a retest, I wanna see how it looks on H4, right? H4, the candle still wouldn't have closed Remember the candle hasn't closed yet, right? So it will just be very like wiki. So I'll be waiting for the H4 candle to close. In this case, to be safe, guys, I'll wait for the H4 candle to close. And as you can see, the H4 wrong one. Our four hour candle closed above with the major wick. So me seeing this H4 candle close like this above our trend line, that would be like confirmation for me to enter. 
buys. So let's say we entered somewhere there with like a tight stop loss, just in case it retraces, right? So let's just do that. Now let's just go down to H1. Okay, so actually it would have been, would have been, let's see, two, would have been here. Our entry point would be exactly over here, right? And we know that on H4, it's a weak rejection, you know? Like imagine if you sold, you would have gotten, like you would have gotten caught on the wrong side of the market. Yes, it would have um, dropped when this candle opened, but you can see it actually closed above, right? So that's the importance of, um, using multi time frame analysis, right? So let's just go into, let's look into this one. I wanna show this example too, because this actually happened to me last, not last week, when was this sixth year. So as you can see now, NAS, we have touch number two, hold on. One, two, uh. three, right? And then here is touch number four, right? So looking at looking at NAS, we have our um, trend line drawn in. We'll be anticipating a fourth touch, right, to enter buys. So we were anticipating a fourth touch. See that the candle closed above the trend line, right? On H1. But then when you look at it on H4, you can see that it actually closed below. That was just a minor or weak rejection. You know, you can see that it wasn't, um, we can actually close below, right? Let me just highlight this so you guys can see. So we would have looked at it. We would have looked at it as, okay, port touch, which I don't blame you, right? So if you just to use one time frame and you entered, you would have gotten a bit lucky. You know, we might have made a little bit of money before like being stopped out or actually making a loss, right? Because you can see that, yes, it came back, closed above, on H1, but remember guys, like I said, you need to wait for H4 and um, daily time frame for extra confirmation. That's sort of we've been going on the wrong side of the market, just like this example over here, right? So you do find a lot of people finding good setups on NAS, but that they, they just enter too soon. They're rushing trades. There's no need to rush. If you had waited for the H4 candle to close, you would have seen that it actually closed below the trend line. You know, and like you would have been stopped out if you entered on H1. If you entered too soon on H1, you would have been stopped out. So looking at it at H4, I'll be like, okay, nah, not, I don't want to enter the buy, you know, because it closed below. But eventually the market bounced off this um zone of support here. Yeah? Bounced off this low, sorry, bounced off this low to go up, right? So enough about the past. Let's look at what NAS is going to do this week. Do you guys just understand, do you guys understand what I just, um, You guys understand what I just covered? That's just another tip that people don't give out. This, this thing is flat, it's on the die. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, yes. All right. Okay, now let's oh, analyze. I... Oh, no, I read the child. I don't know. Can that person meet the mic, please? I don't want to remove another person. Ah, it's okay, sharp. So now let's look. Can that person please meet the mic? Please, yes, sir. A side question, do you trust about, yeah. Guys, please behave. Yeah, literally, guys, if we all work together, you know, we can get a lot done. Because that's level. Okay, let me. Okay, it's actually muted it now, so it's fine. If we give them. All right. So let's look at NAS. Okay, I deleted the daily trend line. Sorry, I just need to do that again. I'd like to have those in just to remind me that. S is very no, I don't connect it from there. Connect it on the recent. So one, two, three, four, touch four. Okay, 
just like that, right? So now we want to focus on NAS from here, from the most like recent obvious um, low, which is this one right over here, right? So this is where I'm going to start my trend line, right? It's actually my first time looking at NAS since it closed last week. I mean, since the market closed last week. So let me see. But I've had this set up, right? And yes, in fact, I'm not gonna lie, I did wait for the full touch here, but obviously didn't enter that trade, right? So looking at NAS right now, you can see that the upward trend line has been intersected, it's been broken, you know? So we don't really wanna focus on this. There's no mark like the market prices currently. Mark, current market price is far from the trend line, right? So we wanna connect new trend lines. You can actually see here we do have um, highs and we can connect the downward trend line over here. It's going to be something like this. You can see touch one, touch two, touch three. Those are entered too soon. They probably like, I know that is going to possibly break out this downward trend line. I'm just going to show you guys now. We have market structure here. Uh, something like that. H1. So as you guys can see, right, this is how NAS is moving, right? Those who entered the third touch, like how do I say this? What you what like what you see isn't really always the case, you know. You need to wait for confirmation, eight um four hour candle, daily candle, you know. You can see we have our first touch, second touch, third touch. Right, most people would have been like, Okay, third touch, I'm selling. So this is the sell. No, I have to buy. Hold on, they would have been like, Okay, third touch, close below, strong with rejection going in. You know, entry points usually would have been like over here. We take first take profit would be the nearest um low. That's a downtrend now. So, first take profit, obvious nearest low, and then second would be somewhere there, right. But then look at what happened. Uh, so you're looking at this trade, you'll be like, okay, we're strong with rejection. H1, right? One hour time frame. Uh first touch, second touch, third touch, you'll be like, okay, third touch, strong with rejection. You know, that that, that can't just be your only like reason to enter. You need further confirmation, you need to see how your four hour can your H4 candle closed, daily candle, you know. Like people jump into trades too soon. So now those holding, those who entered the sun, probably like crying. Entry points would have been like somewhere here. You know, you can see that wicked down a bit. You would have been in small profits, like 100 grand to 0.01, you know. But eventually, especially if it was a smaller country, would have been blown out, you know, because you're looking at the wrong, you've been caught on the wrong side of the market, you know. You're entering trades too soon. There isn't further, there isn't enough confirmation to enter the cell because you can see that on daily time frame, the candlestick is very, very bullish. Actually, looking at this one, this is Thursday's candle, Friday's candle, you know, fat bullish. And the four hour, you know, momentum, you guys, momentum tells a story, right? So now let's look at NAS for this week, right? Um, personally speaking, I honest, I believe that NAS is going to break out this downward trend line, right? Down on trend line. Our first entry point could actually be on the previous high. Let's see. We can actually catch it before it breaks out. Let's see. Let's gonna see something. Just like that, you can see resisted, supported, resisted, resisted supported, broke, you know, resisted again, resisted. But you can see now that this zone is actually broken right now, this H1 candle. It's very, very bullish, right? But you can see we're actually um, retesting this zone, right? However, you can see that we do have lows here to connect an upward trend line. Uh, I forgot to click it, hold on. Right. So yes, we do have a downward trend line, guys, but looking at the bigger picture, bigger time frame, you can tell that NASA's still bullish, you know. Momentum never lies. 
that's one thing I'm going to say, guys. Momentum never, never lies. Momentum never lies. Like NASA, momentum, like same WhatsApp group. You just need to look at the bigger picture, guys. That's something I've been like insisting, something I've been preaching since the start of the session. You need to look at the bigger time frame. Look at the momentum on the bigger time frame to avoid being caught on the wrong side of the market or entering trades too soon. So as I said, we have our first touch and second touch. And yes, NAS is retesting this zone, right? But however, I do believe that it's going to work down a bit. Um, work down a bit to our trend line. I put trend line for a third touch. Then enter. Then we can enter by to go to the upside, right? But however, if you want to be like a safe trader, if you want to be safe, um, I personally suggest waiting on the breakout of the trend line, right? And then entering on the retest, right? Trend line plus this low over here goes hand in hand. Let me just show you on the end 30, 30 minutes. So it's actually on the same level, right? So that's that's how I'm looking at NAS for this week, guys. So it's in the chats. Do you guys understand? Like the importance of it, like looking at the bigger time frame. Looking at momentum, how the candlesticks close, open the chat. Yeah, I also see bias. Yeah, so guys, yeah. I remember guys, we strictly, most of the time we like to use, we like to stick to trend lines, you know, for entry points. We like to stick to trend lines. I, I feel more comfortable entering a setup based on the trend line. Yes, yeah, well, yes, I also see ah, it's okay, proper. Yes, bro, being caught on the wrong side, something we need clarity on. Yes, like you guys mustn't rush to enter the trade. What NAS break the trade line, but don't retest it. Then it's it's fine. We missed that setup, you know. If it if but what's if NAS breaks the trend line but don't retest? There's nothing we can do. Remember. Too steep, like the group, but it depends. It depends. So, as I was saying, um, somebody asked, What if NAS breaks the trade and doesn't retest? I think there's nothing you can do. Like, guys, it, the retest isn't guaranteed, the touch isn't guaranteed. You know, you just trade what you see, you trade what the market gives you, guys, what you see. Just wait for the market to 100%. Just wait for the market to play out. Okay. You literally need to wait for the market to play out. That's like that's why I touched on psychology in the beginning, guys. Like you need to just be patient, you know. Some people like are probably in buy right now, you know. But I personally do believe that NAS is gonna drop a bit down to the trend line, possibly even like reject, you know, strong with rejection before continuing to push to the upside, you know. Like there isn't really much to it. I can't be saying what if, what if, you know, I just trade what I see, you know. And that's what I'm trying to like drill into your guys' brain that you need to trade what you can see, what the market um gives you, you know, trade what you see. So yeah, I see first touch, second touch, second touch. I'll be waiting for a third touch. If it, if I don't get a third touch, let's say the, the um, NASDAQ NAS closes below my upward trend line, you know, I'll simply change my points of view. I'll wait for a retest. If I don't get that retest, if it just like shoots down, then it's fine, you know. Like you need to have a rule, you can't be trying to catch every single pip in the market, every single move. You can't be, like, you need to have your trading plan. You know, my trading plan is third touch, retest, third touch, fourth touch, fifth touch, and retest. You know, if I don't get those, I don't enter. It's like, that's that simple, you know? Let me see. The session really opened my mind. Yeah, like you need to, like you really need to be patient. Guys, you need to be patient, F, like patience, patience. Like your psychology needs to like change. You mustn't like, yeah, you can't, it's okay if you don't trade for a day or a week, you know? It really is okay. If you didn't get your setup, then don't trade. If you didn't get your entry point, don't trade, you know? That's why you need to know yourself as a trader. But at the same time, it's not like, um, yeah, you need to know yourself as a trader, you know? Like, my trading plan is different to my mentor, right? And when Ash has taught me, like, he, like, showed me a trading plan, everything, you know? It's different. 
this is what works for me. Yes, he told me the same thing. But remember, everyone trades in their own way, guys. Remember that. Some people are in the buy right now, for example. Some people are, are in this buy on NASDAQ right now, right? It's like those who trade zones, whatever it's called, supply, demand zones. I don't understand it. They in this buy, you know? But remember, guys, we use trend lines, right? And trend lines are like, like number one backbone, you know? Rely on trend lines, guys. Don't, yes, you can use support and resistance and all that, but only when it goes hand in hand with the trend line, you know? But strictly, like as beginners, focus strictly on the trend line. No third touch, no entry points, you know? So NASDAQ this week, I'm going to be waiting for third touch. I'm going to wait to actually, let me say, I'm going to wait to see how it reacts to the chain line. You know, that's how you should look at the market. So I'm going to wait to see how it reacts to the chain line. If we respect the chain line, buys, breaks, I'm going to wait for the retest. And then, yeah. Can we do a currency pay? Right. Let's do a currency pair. Uh, give me, give me a pair. Give me a pair. Currency pair. Currency pair. GPSD, GPSD. Mm -hmm. Right. GPSD. Me, I'm not really. This isn't a pay I'm comfortable with, you know. Let me, let me look at it. How do I remove this thing? So, GPSD. Okay, first thing I'm looking at market structure. I can see that it's very, very bullish, right? And then we've got to this high, this one over here. Ever since then, it failed to break above, you know, failed to carry on with the bullish rally, right? So we can expect sells, right? But looking more into it, I can see this low, most recent low. So let me just, but we can actually, see, we want to focus on the current market, you know, so we can see here, yeah, I can actually anticipate to read what's going to happen like the structure, guys, structure never lies. You need to understand how to restructure. So let me just plot this. Yeah, it's what it is. And I just do this to know where to connect my train line from, you know? So as I said, I do that to know where to connect, connect my train line so you can see first low, second low, just like that, right? So this is literally how I look, I, I, I've never, I didn't analyze GPUSD before. I haven't actually looked at the markets. So I look at, okay, first touch, second touch. Wait for touch number three, right? So for entry points, however, oh, snap. We can see that we do have like a mini downtrend here, like a channel, it looks like a channel. Let me see if I connect. Yeah, so connecting the downward trend line now on um, our obvious peaks. So one, two, three, third touch, that would have been entry points if you um, opened your charts, you know, while this was still forming, right? Let me see if I can connect. That isn't too solid, just remove it, right? So that's H4, let's go down to H1. Let's look at the charts quick. I'm also seeing a buy, it's a descending, yeah, 100%. I'm just still, I'm looking at the market at a perspective of like other, how other people will be looking at it, you know, but I really know that I want to buy because, you know, I connect to my upward trend and I can see, you know, that it's uh, more bullish than bearish. I just look at the candle. But guys, you need to know, you need to be able to, you need to know how to read. Um, you need to know how to like look at the markets and read, study the candles. You can see that we have like strong the bullish candles come. compared to, um, our bearish candles, you know, like our buy, buying candles are much stronger, much longer, you know, compared to like our bearish candles, you know. You can even see the most recent move was very, very bullish. 
So right now, GPU is actually going to retrace. Okay, no, I actually wasn't finished. I wanted to see if I can connect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this. So in the Falcon way, Falcon language, this will be a correction, right? So you can see that there's our impulse. Impulse, uh, hold on, be impulse, right? And this is currently our correction, right? Waiting on another impulsive move. We'll be waiting for another impulsive move to the upside. So yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I, I think GPUSD is gonna buy based off technical analysis, you know, hit again now, I just need to be patient or everyone needs to be patient for the buy to come. You know, like you can't answer now, you don't have, like we know it's gonna retrace down. Okay, we know it's most likely to retrace. It's very likely to retrace down to the trend line, but you can't say you wanna sell, like why? Why you wanna sell? You, that's when you're like gambling, you know, you're just guessing, you know? You don't have an entry point. You have no reason to enter. You really do, you really don't have any reason to enter. Then such the trend line, no trend line touch, no nothing, you know? So GPUSD, based off our strategy, guys, we should wait for it to retrace down. Wait for it to retrace down for the third touch. See how it reacts. If it closes above the specs, get our reversal candle. Then we can buy. First take profits. If, if it's retracing, this will be our first take profits because it'll be the previous high, you know? Um, but if you want to follow the 90% rule, there you go. There it is. So do you guys, do you guys, do you guys? Oh, it's not bad. I wanted to put an array. Do you guys understand that? Do you guys, do you guys understand that? You guys understand. Understand loud and clear away. Yes, go away. Always, always, always proper. Simplicity, yeah. Simplicity. Online session. Online session. Do you please get it again each time, but it's saved. It's saved. Give me another pair. Went to ninety percent rule, mostly when you have a big account. Like I, I'm not gonna lie to you, I, I hardly use it. Um, because you, you like you do know there's gonna be like pullbacks and everything, but eventually, guys, you can even save this. Like it is, we are gonna reach this. How we yeah, for triple top. Let's see first top, second top, boom. Third top, yeah. So remember this. Remember. A lot of vibes. Ah, I'm seeing gold, a lot of gold. I'm seeing a lot of gold. Okay. Let me look at it. Let me type in gold on Google. Mm -hmm. All right, trading views, X A U U S D. Forex. No, this is an old, 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 old. This is okay. Another only one. Our oh, guys, VIX isn't in the mentorship thing. Like even me, I'm still learning VIX. Lately, I've been blowing on it. So I haven't been posting. You know what I mean? It's impossible. But you can see losses only on VIX. Recently made profits, but yeah, VIX is something I'm still learning. I'm not in a rush to give up mentorship for it's a case of gold, right? Gold likes to move in zone. So first things first, we can see obviously guys like 
same for train lines. Also, your I mean, thingy cut through that. You want to look look at your obvious um levels, you know, obvious lows, obvious highs. So you can see that here, some things here, right? I start starts over there. So there we go. You can see this major, major level. Remember we're on the daily time frame. Like if you open gold on the H1 time frame, you would have seen this big bullish move, but you wouldn't understand wouldn't have understood why. You know, why is gold pushing to the upside? Us who look at the market from like the bigger time frames, we know that okay, gold is pushing up because there's this like major zone resisted resistance, turn into support, 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 support again, support again, support again, you know. So understanding the market is very, is very important, you know, because when you understand the markets, you can't, you're confident, you know. So if, let's say we were to enter buys on gold right now, we'll be, we'll be calm, like we'll be confident. We know that gold is buying because it's um been bouncing off our support zone. Whereas compared to someone who would open the charts and just see that gold is buying, who would just see that gold is moving to the upside, they would buy, right? But then they won't be as confident because they don't know why they're buying, you know. The why is very important, guys. I hope, I hope, I hope you guys understand that. It's very important to understand the markets. Okay, so I can see that zone. Uh, next, so yeah, you can see we have something there. But it does. It looks choppy in the past, but okay, let's see. So there we go. We have our two zones right on gold. But you can actually see we have, I want to show you guys, I'm not saying the third touch is always guaranteed. It's not always guaranteed. You see, yeah, first touch, second touch. Let's say we opened our charts and markets, price market was over here. We'd be like, okay, we want to wait for a third touch, but you see, we didn't get it. We didn't get the third touch, you know? It happens. It happens. Okay, so, so I was still looking at gold. Uh, so you can see it's moving between these two zones. It's my first time actually looking at it, but there is like a mini zone here. You can see gold likes moving zones. That's why ah, you like you hardly see me trading it because it doesn't fit my trading um plan. So we can actually see that gold is buying based off the daily time frame um support level, right? But you can see that on H four. There is another zone here in the middle, resisted off this zone, broke out, supported, supported. You can see just ranging, right? So I, we can actually expect a duplica, a replica, duplica, replica, whatever it is, but another of this, <laughs> another move of this in this zone over here, right? So cold, based off this, right? Cold is most likely, actually, yeah, just actually goes hand in hand with the trend and trade strategy now. Looking at it from the trend line trading strategy, we will see this as a retest. Remember, we have that um, upward trend line. Wait for the retest to sell. So, yeah, yeah, it's actually something I'm going to wait. Yeah, I can actually trade this now because it fits my strategy. No, no touch, no entry. We get a touch here, then you're yeah, perfect for entry. So, yeah, gold is actually retesting. The gold is actually yeah, retracing to retest the daily trend line. That was broken, right? Pluses can go hand in hand with those who trade. Um, it's gonna go hand in hand with those who trade supply and demand, support and resistance. You know, they'll see it as um gold um reacting to this level over here, right? Which is not wrong. Yeah, it might do it might, you know, it could, but as looking at it from trend line training strategy, from the trend line training strategy perspective, it will see it as a retest, you know, to the downside. So yeah, that's gold. I do think. Yeah, it's going to continue going up a little bit. I just want to see how it's going to react to the trend line. So that's my analysis on gold. Actually. Thanks for that one, actually. So do you guys, do you guys um look at H1, you'll see an uptrend, okay. An uptrend. Yeah, yeah, you can see first touch, second touch, third touch. So this is actually the most recent entry point. Correct, yeah, that guy's right. Shout out. 
So do, do you guys understand that? <sighs> do you guys understand? Before we go next, are you understanding? Yes, sir. Yeah, we follow. All right. Um, the session's gonna get cut now, guys, because I only have the standard version. Um, it's gonna let me. I'm gonna go back to the Zoom screen so I can see everyone's face, so everyone can put their camera on. Okay, right. Now the session's gonna get cut just now because I have the standard.